Welcome Internet to a Psychologist's Casual Review and today we're going to be reviewing Love Relationships, Normality and Pathology by Otto Kernberg. This is, at least according to me, one of his seminal works. Something that I think is incredibly interesting, like because he's going to talk about every aspect of the romantic relationship. And when I mean every aspect, I haven't read a book as complete as this within this topic, at least in terms of psychoanalysis, because it's going to be interested in the internal psyche of the couple, the relationships between the couple, the past of the couple, and the future of the couple. And he's going to do that in a very, very far away, more than I've ever seen in anything. He's going to go through biology, gender, ideology, culture, I mean, it's incredibly, incredibly thorough. And what I felt was incredibly interesting is that he's going to basically leave no stone unturned. He's going to go everywhere and go for, go for everything. But the main focus of his book, because of course there has to be a main focus, if not it's going to go everywhere, is the psychodynamic of the couple. And in that I found it very interesting because he starts with normality, and he does explain that basically relationships of things that are in a way a living organism, meaning that they are not static, they're always continually dynamic, as in psychodynamic, meaning this movement, always. And that in normality, in a couple, there's a bit of everything, meaning that in a partner we can both see the mother, the sister, the friend, the confidant, and that basically normality is when everything can still be moving, it's flexible, it's not static, and that's one of the main points of normality. And he does state that basically, normality does not imply anything but the ability to love, to be with one, and to feel the oneness, as he calls it, meaning the effect of being able to enjoy the relationship and most notably the sexual aspects of the relationship because that's another big thing with this book it's going to talk a lot about sexuality and for those that know psychodynamics no not exclusively on infantile sexuality but on adult sexuality and that's the i feel the most interesting part of it is that basically he's going to talk about the capacity to orgasm the capacity to give an orgasm to the partner to receive one to love one and for him nothing is separate, meaning that the ability to receive that orgasm is something, and to enjoy it, is something that's linked also with the love one puts and one receives in the relationship. Things are not separate, it's not sex on one side, relationship on the other. Both are inter interconnected and intermingled. And he says that basically there is a lot of fantasies about the couple's relationship on, at, on the outside world. And that's also something he goes into, in that our society and our culture and the pair group has a vision of the couple. They feel things about the couple. And he said that the couple, in the end, is the ultimate intimacy, privacy, that what goes on in the bedroom between them is the ultimate form of secret. And that basically the group might feel the need to try and know that secret or infer on that secret. And that's something that I have never seen before, at least not stated like that. And I felt that that was incredibly interesting because it's true that often with the couples, they can draw the attention of the other people of trying to guess or sometimes even trying to bet on the relationships and what's going on behind closed doors. And that's very true. And it does state that because this creates a lot of anxiety, the group and at least the society tends to adopt a latency point of view, meaning that if you're not familiar, latency is basically that period of life where humans, notably children from the age of, let's say, 8 to, let's say, 11, 12, do not care at all about anything related to intimacy, privacy, and, uh, let's say, human interactions on a, let's say, more erotic level, let's say. And there's that period of life where children just don't care about it. Even on the contrary, they avoid it very thoroughly. And he states that basically that's what the group does. And the culture itself, because he does quote films, that's another thing that I liked and kind of surprised me, that he goes into how in our Hollywood-based movies, sexuality is completely avoided. It's like 
yeah, okay, it exists, but who cares? And that's another thing that I found incredibly interesting, is that he says that it's pushed away because in a way it's anguishful to know what happens in the, um, in the privacy of the setting because it reminds everyone of the primitive scene, meaning basically the relationship both, of, both parents had to conceive the individual, and that that scene is something that's very anguishful and has to always be avoided. Thus, we adopt culturally a form of latency and a form of puritanism towards sexuality. And I found that very interesting. A little side note is that this book was written in the 90s, so basically society has changed, but I still think he marks a good point, meaning that even in our society where things are shown, things are maybe overexposed, there is still, in a sense, a deep privacy with the relationship. Like, people might state stuff or might talk about stuff, but very rarely is it genuine. And I think that that genuineness is what is secret now. What is secret is no longer sexuality, but genuineness. But that's an aside point. That's a me point. That's not a Kernberg point. So it's, please feel free to discount it. But what I also find interesting is that basically it's going to go into the pathological side of relationships, meaning... We're not just going to stay at normality. We're going to go beyond it. And he goes through two sets of relationships. He, the first one is neurotic, meaning people who have issues and can't relate, but are still consistent within the relationship. People who might find it hard to love, care for others, but not because they themselves are too narcissistic or hurt, but because they all had an upbringing that didn't allow them to basically benefit from the best identifications. Like, for example, he does quote some of his patients basically having despotic mothers or absent fathers, which did play a role in their own um, fear of women or their will, their will to avoid the relationship overly identifying towards a father or being afraid of a mother figure. And same goes for women. Women might, in a way, for example, have start relationships with men that they're not satisfied them because they identify with their mother who had a relationship with a man that was absent or that did not care about them. And that, all of that feeds in. And he does explain it brilliantly well, better than I could ever do it, because he's so rich in how he writes. Like... There's like a bazillion ideas per chapter, which can be sometimes hard to read, but it's always a joy because you learn so much through the, this book. At least that's how I felt. And there's another side of pathology he goes into, most notably the narcissistic, which is something that is always interesting because it's not something that's quite, very, quite common, at least not without that whole bravado of demonization or... That, you know, that cultural, because basically they've culturally become the equivalent of evil. And Kernberg does not adopt that. He does, he does state very thoroughly how they feel. Not, because narcissists cannot love in a common sense of the word. They're going to do it in a very strange way, meaning that they're going to show... They're going to show some form of affection, but it's going to be under the guidance of the person has to gratify them. And they're more in search, and that he explains very well in the book, they searching more in the partner for admiration than love, because they themselves have substituted love for admiration. And basically that's something that they're going to try and seek from their relationships. And that was something that was very interesting. He also goes in into the place of children within narcissistic couples. And basically that sometimes children can be the de facto substitute for a caring relationship, meaning that the narcissist is going to see himself within the children or overly identify with the children, meaning that they're not going to necessarily love the partner, not at all, or not even pretend to love. They're going to just dismiss the partner and just only invest the children. But it's always going to be on the same general scale, meaning that basically they're never going to invest the children as children, they're going to invest them as mirrors of themselves. And then that basically it's not about I'm your father, you're my son, or I'm your mother, you're my daughter. It's about 
basically how you look, how you make me look in the social world. And it's something that could be devastating for the children, obviously, but it's a way that the narcissists find to basically try and create relationships, even though they're not too good at it, and they always feel threatened by them. And that's something that I found very interesting. He's very thorough in the book. And it's a book that I found incredibly interesting at so many levels. Like, I would not be able to quote every aspect of it because it's so rich and dense in details. But it's a really a seminal work if you're interested in anything to do with the couple or with relationships. And it's also, I feel, a book that talks about love in a very profound way, at least more than what I see often, where love is assumed to be a given. Kernberg does not assume such sin. He says that basically love is an ability and not everyone has the ability to love or not always in the same way as another person. And he says that basically in terms of pathology, you can't predict a relationship start and end or even solidity based on psychopathology. That I think is incredibly important because it's true that unfortunately sometimes because of psychopathology people do things that are not in their best interests. And sometimes it's staying with a toxic partner or with an uncaring partner and basically people are going to be maintained within those schemes. And that's an incredibly interesting thing and also a very painful one for the people that live it. But as a psychotherapist, I think it's important because basically it tells us that you cannot uh, predict anything based on psychopathology. And that's something that's quite humbling, that even an expert in personality disorders does state that you can't be anywhere near sure of a relationship and that it's always bound to be explored and transformed through life experiences and psychoanalysis. And that is, um, I think, an incredibly important idea that he gives throughout the book, that sins are always transformative and through psychoanalysis, people with personality disorders or neurosis can restructure their relationships, even their love towards others and maybe give a better form of love, or at least something that's not as destructive in terms of narcissism. And that's where I think the, the whole interest of the book lies, is basically, it's a very in-depth approach to love, which for Kernberg is so many sins, and he does, at least in his eyes, see sexuality as a part of love. But sexuality is very special, because for Kernberg, Basically, his idea is that sex, de facto, is an aggression. However, and that's the interesting part of it, is that because of love, because we are capable of caring for each other, that destructiveness is transformed into something else, into an ability to care and mend each other, to love. And that destructiveness is lost within the relationship during intercourse because we love each other and we are able to go beyond that destructiveness. And that does explain why rape is always a destruction of the individual and of the person. It's an aggression, a sexual assault. And it's that because it's always destructive without love, without caring and without consent. And I think that that's something very important. And it helped me think about those notions and he put them very well into perspective and he was great on that. And there's also a little bit of trivia I'd like to share before in this video. He wrote this book a bit out of spite. And I found that very funny because basically he, if you don't know, Otto Kernberg is known for, um, for basically working on personality disorders and aggression. He's not known for love. And basically one of his colleagues told him, well, Kernberg, why don't you just write on love for a change? And he was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm going to do it. And he's just like, and he wrote a whole book on it. And I mean, that's that's crazy. And I, I love that. It's, it's just wonderful. But you kind of see that basically for him, it's a continuum. Aggression, love, there's a bit of aggression in love. But because of love and its fun transformative function, it goes beyond the aggression. It can transform it into something else, which is unique, genuine and caring. And that I felt was incredibly important. Of course, 
that's about it for the book. So if you feel that you want to ask something or you want to discuss something, please feel free to share it in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.